Hello Reefers! I haven't been here for ages, but I'm finally back and I hope to stay here a little bit longer to share with you the greatest hobby of my life, the reef keeping. For those of you who are here for the first time, I'm Adam and I'm absolutely addicted to coral reefs and their amazing underwater life. Now after this short introduction, make yourself comfortable, take a mug of your favorite coffee or tea and let's start the first update of my tank. Today's episode is the first part of the mega update of my new tank because I decided to get back to YouTubing after over a year and I want to show you what happened in my tank since the last haul. Please subscribe to my channel and remember to hit the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload the new content. Enjoy the video. First of all, let me begin with a short explanation of my pretty long absence here on YouTube. Honestly, it's not bad to have dreams. But the problem begins when your dreams start to overwhelm you. Starting this YouTube channel, I have a great dream to make videos weekly or even twice a week, to make multiple series and to share as much knowledge as it's possible. I spend a lot of money on video equipment and... Everything crashed almost a year ago after a series of short movies called The Ocean Drop, because of the lack of time and my burnout. I've recorded like 300 gigabytes of video material for my movies and I didn't have enough time to edit them. My English was not as fluent and good as I expected, particularly speaking live in front of my camera. Finally, I've lost all my heart not only to YouTube and other social media I was running, but also to all this amazing hobby. Now I'm here with more realistic plans of just sharing the simple updates and my impressions concerning my reef tank and reef keeping. I want to make them for fun and I hope they will help other people to set up and to take care of their reef tanks. Ok, enough of this introduction, let's move to the tank, because today I want to show you what has changed for this long period of time. It has been a pretty long time since I've uploaded anything to my YouTube channel, so there are many things to talk about, but because I want to keep this video simple and clear, in every episode I'll focus on a couple of main threads concerning the most important events in my tank or reef keeper's life. In the beginning I have to say that the end of the last year and the beginning of 2020 was not an easy time for my tank. After last year's summer holiday, I had a series of small crashes that led to a pretty fast increase of pH, calcium and magnesium, as well as the levels of nitrates and phosphates. They comprised the fail of my ATO and skimmer once something went wrong with my overflow resulting in refilling almost 25 liters of RO water by the ATO and immediate drop of salinity, then I increased it up to almost 1.013 in specific gravity because of using the non-calibrated refractometer and finally, when I realized that my parameters, particularly salinity, pH, nitrates and phosphates goes very high, I decided to, hmm, help my tank by changing the next 25 liters of water with pure RO water. Maybe I decreased all these parameters successfully, but unfortunately I forgot about the rest, so the levels of calcium, magnesium and many other things went down, causing the cyano outbreak and killing some of my corals, including my beloved Euphilia, a home to my clownfish, which moved to the sarcopithon right after Euphilia's death. Cleaning this mess took me almost 3 months, and after that time my tank looked almost like a desert. I definitely needed to add some new corals to make it more colorful and just to put more, let's say, life into it. Not long after Christmas I had some spare money for the new corals, but once more I had a very bad luck. My local fish store, where I always buy everything to my tank, stopped to sell fish and corals due to the change of location. But lucky me, I found another fish store in my city. Very small one, but stuffed with so many amazing and colorful frags that I just can't stay and watch them on their website. I decided to visit it, check it out and buy something to my tank. Spending something about 400 slotes, I came back with a little box of corals. Dark green Euphilia glabrescens, so the torch coral with white tips, super cool purple chalice with green fluo spots, Australian Duncan coral and two Montiporas. 
Toxic Green Fluorescent Plating Monty and Green Red Monty Porosamorensis. As a free gift I got also a little frag of Green Seriatopora Caliendrum. After acclimation I decided to put them to my tank and just observe them for a few days to find the best place for them. So here they are. And finally more life moved into my tank. Before I end this first part of the mega update, I want to tell you a few words explaining why I decided to choose this specific corals. First of all, Euphilia. Euphilias are one of my favorite LPS corals and I was so proud of my previous Para Ancora. It was getting huge with over 11 heads, but unfortunately I've lost it because of the destabilization of the parameters. It was actually one of my first LPS corals and I had it for over 3 years, moving it from my old tank and my parent's place. After this big loss it was obvious that I want to have another one in my collection, so here it is, Euphilia Para Ancora. These toxic green monties were on my bucket list for a pretty long time, so when I spot it in my local fish store I just couldn't deny to buy it. Moreover, it's fluorescent, which means it glows under the actinic light. My next new frag is Montipora samarensis. I bought it mainly because of its wonderful green and red colors. I saw these corals in the internet, but didn't know their name. When I saw it in the store, I asked about it and after a short talk about this species, I decided to add it to my tank. Duncan corals fascinated me not very long ago, but I just thought they are too simple with their look and colors to be a part of my coral stock but this Australian Duncan coral had caught my eye and now I am a proud owner of it. And last but not least, this totally awesome Echinophilia chalice coral. Its coloration is so eye-catching that I can't resist to bring it home. It's probably the most colorful and the most fluorescent coral I already have in my tank. Unfortunately, I forgot the name of this color version, so if any of you know it, please let me know in the comments below. Additionally, I got a free gift frag, which was Seriatopora caliendrum, so the green bird's nest coral with nice milk green fluorescent polyps. I got it after the talk with the local fish store owner, during which we can't agree if it's Seriatopora hystrix or Seriatopora caliendrum. Finally, it turned out to be caliendrum, so I was right. Ending this episode I just want to share with you a longer shot of my newly added corals under actinic light. Some of them are totally awesome and will definitely bring more colors to my deserted tank. I hope they'll be alright and start to thrive very soon. And that's all for the first part of my update. If you want to be up to date, consider subscribing to my channel for more reef keeping videos. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and share your opinion in the comments section below. Until next time, and let's reef the world!